Hi, my name is Corin, and I am a Community Engagement Ranger for the Hampshire Countryside Service Access Team. Today I've brought you to the far north of Hampshire, to the North Wessex Down National Landscape, to bring you a hidden walk from a place that's instantly recognisable to many. This is Watership Down. We're starting our walk today from White Hill, which is just outside Kingsclear on the B3051. There's lots of parking here. Personally, I would recommend that you use the car park set back from the road, particularly if you've got dogs and children, as you'll be able to get out of the car safely away from the road. Today, we'll be walking west from here at White Hill, all the way along the top of the downs to the instantly recognisable Ladle Hill. Along the way, we'll be looking at the landscape that inspired one of Hampshire's most famous literary works about a bunch of intrepid rabbits. Watership Down is about more than just rabbits, however. The geology of this place is impressive. Behind me to the north are the steep slopes known as a scarp, which head down to the relatively flat basin below. But to the south, it's very different. The slopes roll gently down towards the Tess Valley. The impressive chalk landscape here was all formed when the Alps rose up between 65 and 2.5 million years ago and the effects of this rippled out, bringing ground that was previously under the seabed up higher. These slopes are also famous in the sporting world. 1971 Epsom Derby winner and champion racehorse Mill Reef was trained right here by Ian Balding from the racing stables just below in the valley. His son Andrew Balding still trains there to this day and if you come up here first thing in the morning, you too may see racehorses galloping right here. As I mentioned, today we are walking part of the Wayfarer's Walk. In total, the Wayfarer's Walk is a 70 mile promoted route that starts just over the border in Berkshire at Inkpen Beacon and heads east before arcing south through all of the downs, down towards Allsford and then into the Meon Valley before it meets the coast at Emsworth. The track we're using today is a bridleway, so it can be explored on foot, on horseback or by bike. And being so well made and free draining, it's great for accessibility and also a great place for children and dogs to let off some steam. There's no escaping the fact though that just the words watership down mean one thing to most people and that is rabbits. Written by Richard Adams in 1972, the novel has sold over 50 million copies and has never once gone out of print in all of that time. I've brought my own copy with me here today and this one is from 1974, making it one of the earliest. As a child growing up near here, I was absolutely obsessed. We had the CITV animated series on TV when I was little and I loved coming up here and imagining, probably imagining to be a rabbit to be honest. We're just getting close to one of the key locations in the book now. So let's go and check that out now. There's no mention of the isolated trees on Ladle Hill, which was used in both the film and the animated series as the home of the rabbits in the book itself. Instead, the map suggests that the warren was formed here, actually on Watership Down. In 2013, this beech tree was planted to commemorate Richard Adams and the book, and some of the crucial characters from the novel have had their names etched into the fence. There's also a plaque with a quote from the book itself. Dandelion, get down, said Hazel. Why are you sitting up there? Because I can see, replied Dandelion, with a kind of excited joy. Come and look, you can see the whole world. Richard Adams was a local man born in Wash Common on the outskirts of Newbury, just north of here in 1920. He was inspired by this landscape and as a result, it is threaded deep into the meaning of the novel. We're now going to leave Wardship Down itself and cross this quiet lane. It's worth mentioning that there is parking here if you only wanted a short walk towards Ladle Hill. For us though, we're going to carry on over to the hill. As we walk this next section, you'll notice these amazing trees towering above us. This belt of beech trees forms the beach hanger that is frequently described in the novel. 
It was different from the meadow copses they had left. A narrow belt of trees, four or five hundred yards long, but barely fifty wide. A kind of windbreak common on the downs. It consisted almost entirely of well-grown beeches. The great smooth trunks stood motionless in their green shade, the branches spreading flat, one above another in crisp light dappled tiers. Between the trees, the ground was open and offered hardly any cover. The rabbits were perplexed. They could not make out why the wood was so light and still and why they could see so far between the trees. The continuous gentle rustling of the beech leaves was unlike the sounds to be heard in a copse of nut bushes, oak and silver birch. Here, our route bends round to the right and we're going to pass through this gate. Now there's sheep out in this field, so I'm going to make sure that I shut it behind me. If you'd like more tips on how to walk safely around livestock, click the link to check our video. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, then there is this 24 mile trail that takes in all of the locations in the book. This was devised by Wichich Walkers Are Welcome to commemorate the book's 50th year. These beautifully illustrated trail maps and guides are free to download from wichurch.org.uk. We're going to be continuing on our way up to Ladle Hill though. From here, we're going to leave the Wayfarers Walk and make use of this access land at Ladle Hill to explore the hill fort. Ladle Hill is a triple SI, that is a site of special scientific interest. So designated because of its floral diversity, which includes burnt tip orchids. It is also a scheduled monument with evidence of an unfinished hill fort, barrows and other earthworks. To me, these beech trees on the end of Ladle Hill are every bit as iconic as other famous UK trees and are instantly associated with Adam's novel. The 1978 movie set the rabbit warren beneath their roots and if you're a child like me that grew up obsessed with the animated TV version, then the rabbits also made their home here and this, to me, is their true home. This is where we'll be ending our walk today, however there's plenty of other paths around if you want to make a circular route and continue further. Following a bracing winter's walk up here, you'll no doubt be wanting to go somewhere nice and cosy to warm up. To do this, there's plenty of country pubs about. The closest is in Etchinswell or Kingsclear. Or if you want to immerse yourself fully in the Watership Down experience, then the Watership Down Inn can be found a few miles south from here in Freefolk. To finish up, I'd just like to say that Richard Adams died in 2016 at the age of 96. But his work will live on and everybody that comes here will also be inspired by this landscape. I'd also like to just finish with one famous quote from the book. All the world will be your enemy, prince with a thousand enemies. And when they catch you, they will kill you. But first they must catch you. Digger, listener, runner, prince with a swift warning. Be cunning and full of tricks and your people shall never be destroyed. If you've really enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe for more hidden walks just like this.